darasani sisi inaitishwa wanakuja paka kwa nyumba wanachapa watoto wetu na wanaua wazee bila sababu sasa tuko na shida ndio tumetoroshwa tukaacha mali yetu huko tukakuja hapa hawa sisi sina serikali kama bana hiyo bedelisha hii serikali ya hii adegi sisi wananchi ya Ethiopia ataisha yote the government say on his media it was by mistake how the government can kill by mistake 10 people the last uh, one week we have been helping with the health services with um, the shelter and non food items the collapse of Ethiopia is not good for the region it's not good for North Africa sensitive times for one of Africa's fastest growing economies sustained anti-government protests have hit Ethiopia this time in a scale unseen before. The political pressure that has even seen the exit of former Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dessalin after five years in power. Stop killing to our people. Stop, stop killing. Stop killing. People. A state of emergency is on in Ethiopia. This is Sesi Rescue Camp here in Moyale, one of the biggest centers that has been created to contain the ballooning number of immigrants streaming here into Kenya. And even as local authorities think of quick fix solutions to ending this, ultimately this has everything to do with finding a lasting solution in the Ethiopian political crisis. <laughs> wakawafunga watoto wao wadogo wakubwa wao paka wasichana wao kutoka wapige kutoka sehemu hiyo kwao waliwafikisha hapa boda ya Somare sasa ndio wakaweza kuvuka pande ya Somare wakatorokea pande hii as the Ethiopian government has been declared the state of emergency the people has against that state of emergency and we are feeling insecure immediately the immediate cause is the Ethiopian military force targeted the peace citizens who are in their shop, who are in their hotels, who are on the bajaj, who are on the motorcycles. Indiscriminately, they fired gun and immediately, abruptly, 10 have been killed there and we have, even I am among the witnesses there, I have carried three cops to the hospitals and over 24 are injured. Oppressed voices believe it's only through protests that they can bring meaningful change to their country. The numbers are not static, they are changing, they are increasing every day. So we just have to keep on monitoring day by day, it will continue changing. Uh, we hope they change for the better in that they go back, but if they keep on coming, then as we said, it's both central government decision and county government as to what happens to them. But uh, our role is to provide assistance and that's what we will continue doing. Over the past two years, Ethiopia has experienced unrelenting mass protests and ethnic conflicts. The country has been reeling from violence that has claimed the lives of thousands and displaced hundreds of thousands. Ethiopia could be staring at the biggest political crisis since the communist regime was overthrown in 1991. Dessalin's resignation followed by the enforcement of a state of emergency appear not to have unraveled the puzzle, the long-running political crisis. And if anything, Ethiopia seems to have gone off the rails even further. In light of the political history of Ethiopia, the resignation of a sitting head of government has a symbolic relevance, but its political significance will depend on uh, you know, the change that uh, would follow his resignation. The new leader, youthful leader Abiy Ahmed, is from the Oromo majority, coming into office with an impressive political and academic profile. The new leader will be overseeing a government dominated by the minority Tigrayan community, which still has a grip on the country's security systems. The community also has spread its tentacles into the country's economy. The process to unveil Abi Ahmed has been opaque, intense, punctuated by tension and lobbying. This is the day perhaps most Oromos have been waiting for. Abi will be the first Oromo Prime Minister in the 27 years EPRDF has been in power. <laughs> Serkala, serkala.
wanaichu raya serikali ya la bultieda na kasaera na saya na sema kwamba serikali yao ndio wameanza kugua watoto kwa nyumba kwa duka ama kwa hotel Samana Ali said that the appointment of Anoromo to the most powerful political office in the country could ease tensions. The country is divided into ethnically based states in a federal system ruled by a coalition of four parties under the umbrella the Ethiopian People's Revolutionary Democratic Front EPRDF. It is dominated by the Tigrayan minority. Tigrayans are just 6% of Ethiopia's 100 million population. Parties under EPRDF include Tigrayan People's Liberation Front, TPLF, the Amhara National Democratic Movement, ANDM, the Oromo People's Democratic Organization, OPDO, and the Southern Ethiopian People's Democratic Movement, SEPDM. When the you know, military came to power, the first you know, 20 years, Melis was a strong man who can unite the world nation by iron, by, iron, by iron fist, who can initiate the economic development until it to be became one of the first growing economy in Africa. But he failed one issue, to start a new reconciliation among the, the communities. Despite the economic prosperity, Despite the economic development, still the, 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 you know, there is a, a suspicion between the communities. The biggest tribes in Ethiopia, the Amhara and the Oromo, account for over 60% of the country's population, yet they have little stake in the coalition government. The Oromo community has never held a position higher than a minister. They are standing up to the Tigrayans and publicly challenging official policy. Just on this pretext alone, the unveiling of Abi Ahmed could be a redemption. And it's a larger question as to whether then the Tigrinya, who then predominantly are, have a bigger share, bigger input within the key echelons of power within Ethiopia, will they then concede or share power more equitably? But there is a political succession issue going on in Ethiopia. The fight for space in Ethiopia for the Oromo has however come at a huge cost. The country's military is not amused by the new surge. They are silencing every voice of dissent. More than 10 Oromos were killed in February. Thousands displaced and the impact of the unrest now quickly spilling over across borders. Among them a seven-year-old boy was killed right at the border on the Ethiopian side as he was coming from school on the Kenyan side, this has heightened emotions.